I was walking home late one night. I live in a residential neighborhood that is virtually crime-free. My neighbor Ginger, a beautiful 30-year-old cutie, was walking into her house. As Miss Superwoman opened her door, some scumbag jumped out of a thicket of trees and pushed her into the house. She screamed. I grabbed a pipe from the trash can and ran to her. An animal-like man was pulling off her clothes. I hit him on the arm with the pipe and he flew out the door. She was crying and completely distraught. I made some tea and calmed her down. We called the police and explained what had happened. When the police left, Ginger took my phone number in case the jerk came back. I never hit on Ginger. She was too attractive. I was married for five years to a gorgeous doll. My wife was hit on by half the guys she dated. Eventually, she found Mr. Irresistible and left me. Now all I wanted was to meet an average woman who, like me, longed for children and a comfortable life. A few days later, Ginger called and took me out to dinner to reward me. We went to a small Italian restaurant with delicious food. Ginger is very smart, witty, and fun to be with. She immediately went on my don't get involved list. Re-experiencing the hell I went through with my wife was not in my plans. I thanked her for a great night. She said it was just a small reward for me protecting her. Ginger also enjoyed our meeting and asked me if I was interested in another date. I replied that she was way out of my league. I was honestly looking for someone to make a lifelong commitment with. She mentioned that she was tired of the single life and was also looking for a marriage partner. I explained that I was married to a beautiful woman and didn't enjoy men hitting on her all the time. When we entered the room, all the men's eyes were fixed on my ex. When we were at a party, I was amazed at how many of my male friends joined us for conversation. At the event where there was dancing, she spent all her time either dancing with some stud or refusing to dance with anyone. I was aware that all the players were constantly trying to get her attention. She didn't seem to notice anything. Apparently, my ex-wife wasn't so inattentive after all. Ginger was even more attractive than my ex-wife. Tom, Ginger said bluntly and sincerely, you are a very sweet and bright, funny person who is a pleasure to be around. I don't consider you a failure. You could outdo anyone I've ever met. I thanked, but discreetly turned the conversation in another direction. We stopped there. I'd meet her on the street and we'd have brief conversations from time to time, but that was it. Well, at least for the next few months. A few weeks before Christmas, Ginger stopped me and asked if I could accompany her to her office Christmas party. She wanted me to experience a date with her among people. I couldn't refuse. She looked adorable. Ginger surprised me when I took her hands. She was very conservatively dressed, with a minimum of makeup. She was definitely attractive, without the hot, sexy, come on look. My ex would never leave the house for a party looking like that. Ginger was too good looking to be considered unattractive, but she was as unassuming as could be for a naturally gorgeous babe. She mentioned that she was an executive secretary and always dressed modestly at work. I was surprised myself, finding myself impressed. That evening we had a ball. She danced almost every dance with me. The men paid attention to her, but they didn't flirt or hit on her much. Ginger exuded strength and confidence without being overly familiar. She explained that at work she was serious and didn't tolerate any nonsense. Many people thought she was a lesbian. Ginger had never, ever, ever, ever dated a co-worker. I was impressed. We started dating. She always dressed appropriately. Her attractiveness, in my opinion, didn't need much embellishment. We had a lot in common. Gradually, we became affectionate, and almost without thinking about it, we began a passionate sexual relationship. She wore sexy outfits and stunning makeup, but only with me. We strived to spend every second together. She moved in with me. I did all the cooking. She did most of the cleaning. We were both very happy. We respected each other's hobbies and shared what we both enjoyed. It was the happiest period of my life. It was then that Ginger, in her superior wisdom, decided we should get married. I liked the way we were and liked the idea of marriage. After all, it was what I'd always wanted with the right woman, of course. I had a lot on my mind. I spent time researching what makes wives cheat and what to look out for. I asked Ginger to go through my list of requests and see if she could agree to it. List one, never go out drinking with anyone but me. No bachelorette parties with drinking and dancing. Two, going out to dinner with only women is okay, but you should limit the number of drinks to two. Three, 
Don't take a job that involves traveling. 4. Can't have a job that requires a lot of overtime. If the job changes and requires more and more time, quit. 5. No lunches or dinners alone with a man. If any of the rules on the list are broken, I will divorce. No discussion about the reason why the list was broken. I will also stick to the list. What's fair is fair. I asked her to take a week and think about the list. Ginger was not thrilled with the list. Little things in life can happen. Her boss might invite her to have lunch with him and she couldn't refuse. Many jobs had women who had bachelorette parties outside the home. It would be hard for her to turn down a great job just because it involved traveling. After much discussion, we decided that marriage was ruled out. Since we were both looking for partners for life, we should have parted ways since we obviously couldn't agree. So we separated. This again turned into a black period of my life. I wasn't going on dates. I spent a lot more time working and drinking. After a few months, I quit drinking and tried to get my life together. I never contacted Ginger, and she never tried to contact me. I went on a few dates that meant nothing. I didn't come to like any of the women I met. The world seemed gray. About six months after we broke up, Ginger suddenly called me. She wanted to discuss something with me over dinner. I invited her over and made her favorite shrimp risotto. She showed up looking sexy and spectacular. We had a great dinner complimented by a very expensive wine she bought. Ginger had never been married and didn't envision the problems listed as applying to herself. She told me she decided to go through the list piece by piece to see if I was correct in my assessment. Item 1. She was with the ladies from work at a bachelorette party. Sure enough, when they started dancing, the married women got carried away. Men were grabbing their butts and groping them. Most didn't mind. Drinks were undoubtedly involved. One of them joined the man in the back seat of the car. Disgusting. I knew it wasn't for me. Ginger declared as if nothing had happened. Everyone drank too much, like they were asking for trouble. Giving it up as an activity wasn't a problem for her. The only problem, she stated, is that I refuse to be told what I can or cannot do. Point two. No problem. I rarely have two drinks and never more. The only problem, she repeated, is that I refuse to be told what I can or cannot do. Point three. This is a difficult problem. I may never be offered a job with travel. So why should I give up my marriage to a great guy for something that will probably never happen? I decided to talk to a married friend of mine who traveled at least one week a month. I asked her how it was affecting the marriage. She said she would be honest with me but wouldn't reveal her whole story. She said she loved it. It gave her time away from her two children. She definitely appreciated her husband more since she started seeing him less often. But her husband hated it. They were making an amazing income from this job. Without it, her husband would have left her. He didn't enjoy their sex life. It was intermittent, and many times he felt his wife was having pity sex with him, he never fully trusted her. If he couldn't reach her, he suspected the worst. She wouldn't say it, but I suspect she sometimes had sex while traveling. The guilt created a lack of satisfaction and disrespect for sex with her husband. Her sex at home was not as arousing as sex while traveling. She loved her husband and wanted to spend the rest of her life with him, but she wasn't willing to give up traveling for him. That's saying a lot. Point four. This is similar to point three. Ginger may never have a job that requires a lot of overtime, but she will not turn down such a job if it is required. Point five. Ginger didn't quite understand why she couldn't just have lunch or dinner with a man. She agreed that to dine alone with the same man too often was asking for trouble, but once in a while occasionally she thought it wasn't necessarily trouble. She then asked me to respond to her comments. First, I wanted to respond to her statement that I refuse to be told what I can or cannot do. I wasn't telling her what not to do. We weren't married, but we were planning on it. I wanted her to know what behavior was unacceptable to me. Telling her after we were married would have been a requirement. Now I was pointing out that I would leave any marriage in which such behavior was prevalent. She may or may not have accepted every item on the list. The decision is hers, not mine. Item 1. It wasn't difficult. I feel that a husband or wife who has gone out drinking or dancing without their spouse is actually on the verge of cheating. Point two. More than two drinks can lead to problems. I want my spouse to always be in control of the situation. Point three. I want to get married to share my life. Having a traveling wife is not my idea of marriage.
Raising my children alone is not my goal in life. Being 200 miles away from home, you can trust that a little affair is harmless and you'll never get caught. The severity of the pain associated with going through a divorce is not as obvious. Point four. Pretty much the same answer as above. I make enough money to support us. Over time, work would be the gravy we can get by without. I want my wife to fully share my life, and I don't need the income from her over time. Item 5. The occasional lunch would not be a problem. No more than once a week. I don't understand why it's necessary to have dinner with a man. Why can't you find a woman with whom your wife can share friendship and lunch is a big deal to me, too. I also resent the fact that my wife can share our secrets with some man. We started working on the list. We both had reliable incomes and agreed that our marriage was more important than any job or any man. It wasn't hard to agree on the first and second items. We both agreed instantly. Point three. This could be a problem. Neither of us would want to give up a great job because we would have to travel. However, leaving our spouse at home with the kids was also not an option. After some thought, we decided that marriage was more important than work, that a small amount of traveling was acceptable, but if it caused problems in our marriage, such work would be discontinued. Item 4. For a special project that would only last a month or two, a limited amount of overtime was allowed. If it required more than that, the company would be the problem, not us. Item 5. This problem was more difficult to solve. What if the boss took his spouse out to lunch to discuss a project? What if someone kept joining her at lunch? Well, if on rare occasions the boss joined the spouse for lunch, that was acceptable as long as it was actually work-related. The opposite sex was acceptable if it was rare, and if you usually ate with someone of the same sex. After that, we agreed that the list was not a law, but serious guidelines created to make both partners more comfortable. Divorce was not a threat, but a consequence of bad behavior. The list pointed out bad behavior if it became habitual. Proof of infidelity was not required. Just stepping on a slippery slope was enough, and it would be considered enough for divorce. That opened the door. We started living together again for the next six months. We were both aware of the other's feelings. Epilogue. We got married. Fortunately, after the birth of our two children, Ginger stopped working. We had a solid family life. She was always beautiful and men hit on her, but usually only once. She made it perfectly clear where she was at. We always loved each other and the feeling grew stronger as the years went by. Shortly before she died, Ginger told me that she never violated a single item on this list and never regretted it. 